welcome to worship. It is so good to see you. It is a great day, even though it's not as sunny as it was yesterday. It's a little gray is good. It's a hot you know, summer, so it's nice to have some cool weather. Welcome to worship. Just a few announcements to get on your hearts and minds as we begin our time together today. First, in a couple of weeks, no, not a couple of weeks, next week, next, uh, yes, next Wednesday, so um, September 13th, whatever day of the week that is, at 6 p.m., the Roscoe Rock Youth Ministry is launching their fall series. So anybody in middle school or high school who wants to join, it's a fantastic organization that used to be on the board of it. It is wonderful. We invite you to come and enjoy a wonderful, faith-filled, fun evening. Secondly, uh, there was an announcement sent out in our email blast on Friday, but not everybody gets emails, so we don't assume anything. Um, this past Tuesday, the leadership of the church voted to transition Roscoe Press to phase two of our reopening plan. What does that mean? Uh, nothing is going to change on Sunday morning for us. We're still going to see socially distance with our families, um, but what this does is allows outside groups like the Boy Scouts like TOPS, like the quilting group, other groups that use our building to come back in, as well as committees and ministry teams. We feel confident that the school has done a phenomenal job as they have reopened in the school year. And so we have moved to phase two. So Polly and I in the office are still going to be fully remote, but on Sunday mornings, we're going to stay where we are and also allow outside groups to come in. Third, we, we're in this fascinating season of life where we don't know exactly what to predict about the future. We don't know what the next week is going to look like, let alone next month. So after some discernment, the leadership agreed with a recommendation from the children's ministry team to have a trunk or treat event for Halloween this year. We don't know what the town of Roswell is going to do, so what that is, is we line up a bunch of cars in the parking lot. And we open our trunks, and there are safe treats displayed for kids in town to come, the whole community to come, and have a wonderful Halloween evening. Um, the treats are going to have come with maybe like a bottle of water or a piece of candy. Also, a little message about who we are. We're not just some random people off Highway 26. We're a church, and we love this town. So there will be more included in those messages about who we are and where this is coming. So if you would like to participate, to share your trunk with our community, let Susan or Terry Lynn know, and we'll sign you up. It's, it's not this big deal, but it's, it's a fun event where we can bless our town in a safe and accessible way. And then lastly, um, a really beautiful opportunity fell in our laps. Um, where one of the sons of our church contacted me. His name is Travis Perkins. Jim and Cindy's son, and he lives up north in uh, northern Indiana, and he is now a personal trainer. And so he asked, he does, teaches training exercise classes outside. And so what he wants to do is come to our church and teach a class first for um, uh, kind of young adults. It's called a HIT class, High Intensity Interval Training class. That's on Monday morning starting Monday, September 14th at 6 a.m., so God bless you if you make it. I will be exercising my unconscious at that time. But there's also a wonderful exercise class for senior citizens called Silver Sneakers. And so Travis is going to come. It's all going to be outdoors, safe, socially distanced, and, and help us get fit. And this is not just for our church. This is for the whole community. So we're going to have more information posted next week, but if you'd like to know more or to sign up, just shoot us a call or an email to the church office, and we'll make sure to link you up with the tracks. With that, I invite you to take a breath to rest from what has undoubtedly been a long week and to prepare your hearts to worship God.
to write his law in our hearts, to put it in etched in stone for eternity, to forgive our sins, to be our God, and let us be his people. So standing on that promise, I invite you as we join together in confessing our sins before God and one another. God of the truth, we come before you as those who cannot hide anything from you. We confess that we have grown irritable and restless, impatient and quick to judge, ready to throw in the towel at a moment's notice when we disagree or don't get our way. Because our lives and livelihood have been held captive by a virus, by decisions we don't expect, and by people we consider enemies. Jesus, have mercy on us. Calm our pulse, still our minds. Free us from the chaos and tyranny of impulsive deeds. Breathe your wisdom and peace into us, and hear us now as we continue. the big 
base of the mountain. So Moses climbs up and he goes up on top of the mountain and he starts to talk with God. And all the while, everyone is waiting. Well, one day goes by and they think, sure, whatever, it's fine. It's a God thing. He'll be back tomorrow. But Moses doesn't come back. A week passes, and they start to kind of get a little worried. And still, Moses is gone. Five weeks go by, over a month. And then something happens. The people give up on Moses. They get angry, and they say, you know what? Forget Moses. We're going to go our own way. We are angry. We are frustrated. I am done. And they turn away from Moses, and they turn away from God. You know, with school and all this craziness, these face masks you're wearing, things get really frustrating sometimes. And, you know, it's okay to get frustrated because sometimes that's healthy, that's good, that's right. If somebody is in school and you see them being picked on and you get frustrated, that's a good thing. But sometimes we listen too much to our anger and we get impatient and we make mistakes. So as you go this week, if you get frustrated with your sister or with your brother or with your parents, that's okay. The Bible tells us that we can be frustrated, but let's be frustrated together with Jesus, treating each other with grace and with love and remembering that God is ultimately in control. And no matter what happens, that means you're going to be okay. Sound all right? Okay. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads and close our eyes and pray together. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that CJ has such good lungs. We thank you, Lord, that there are times where you give us frustration because you want to show us something. Help us, Lord, to deal with our anger and frustrations as you do. As Christians, not reacting responding in faith. This we pray in your holy name. Amen. Thank you so much. You may go to kids' church or the nursery or back to your seats for the parents. You want to help me like you? Would that be the most part of this? Okay. Alright, so you know how we can stand in front of the table. We jump up and down because this is pretty awesome. Remember what we talked about the other day? This is a really, you want to try to touch the end? This is a really special candle. It's called the Jesus candle. And we light it on Christmas and we light it every Sunday after because it reminds us that God is here and He's not going anywhere. Thank you. You may go back to your home, to your grandparents. As we open ourselves to hear what God has been preparing us all week. Join me as we pray what we normally sing and speak of the Lord. Speak, O oh Lord, as we come to you to receive the fruit of your holy word. Take your truth, plant it deep in us, shape it and fashion us in your lives, that the light of Christ might be seen today in our
with the law and the commandments which I have written you for their instruction. So Moses entered the cloud and went on the mountain and was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. But when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and they said to him, Come, make gods for us who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. So Aaron said to them, All right, take off the gold rings that are on your ears, the ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took them off, and brought them to Aaron, and he took them and formed a mold and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation, and he said, Tomorrow, shall be a festival to the Lord. So the people rose up early the next day and they offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of little baby. And the people sat down to eat and drink and they rose up to revel. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks. Thank you, Jesus, God. So, Sometimes, at night, I have a really hard time sleeping. By sometimes, I mean like five out of the seven nights a week. I'm just there on my pillow, and my mind is wandering around like a kid in a mall that's not on its parental leash. And it's hard. And when I was growing up, I remember my mom having a similar issue. And then, she talked about something that didn't happen to me until about two years ago. I've never heard anybody else talk about it, so it may be a wild thing, or it may be a real phenomenon, but people in my family, when they're having a hard time sleeping, struggle with something called restless leg syndrome. Does anybody know what that's like? Okay, I'm sorry for all of you. <laughs> Rissa, and, and to be fair, I have not done any research on that. So the technical term might be full of Latin and, and you know 19 characters, but but I was always told it's called restless leg syndrome. And it's this weird, odd sensation in your leg. It's not a cramp, it's more like an ache. It's not a pain, it's this this overwhelming urge for your leg to move. <laughs> and so I'll wake up at like 3 o'clock in the morning and just like do a bunch of these, like and I freak my wife out to know it, but like you have to move it or massage it or do something to just make it stop. And that's kind of what's going on in this story. So as you know, over the last month-ish, we've been talking about different ways that we psychologically and spiritually and relationally have had this haze, this funk of COVID. Because as the British are fond of saying, when people feel like they're out of place, they say, you have forgotten yourselves. And sometimes that happens. Christians even forget themselves during a moment of crisis. But we've only actually talked about half of the problem. Because at first we thought we'd just plug up, grit our teeth, and be fine. Three months later, we'd be done. But it's still going on. And there is absolutely no end in sight. And there is a restlessness that sets in. A tension that's brewing and building like steam in an old locomotive. Like a restless leg when you're trying to get sleep. And one of the many blessings of being a part of a tradition, a faith family that is literally 
thousands of years old as the people of God, is we realize that this is not the first time we've been here. So, there's a guy named Moses. He's like 85 years old, but he's still got it. He can still play basketball and run for the kids and the grandkids. He's pretty agile, but he doesn't get to do all that fun stuff because of his job. His job is definitely not a nine to five. He is something like a king, but just without all the fun parts of being king, just the boring, nauseating, annoying parts of being head of state. And he's a leader of literally thousands of people. And it was he and his brother Aaron who went with God and brought all of them out of Egypt. And they're on the road. And they're walking hundreds of miles from where they were to their original home country. And then something happens. Moses decides to stop and ask God for directions. It's not the whole truth. More God told him to stop and get a bunch of directions. And so he does. And like everybody, he goes up and everyone says, oh, fine, whatever. He'll be back later on tonight. We'll be fine. We'll maybe do a half day's hike tomorrow. And another day passes. And they start to get concerned. And so they go to Aaron, his brother, and ask, have you gotten a text, an email? Do you have to find my friends? The only problem is it's like 4,000 BCE, so it's going to be a hot minute until they've got that technology. And no one knows what's going on. And the passage says that it didn't sit well with them. Because you got to remember, these people are not used to just hanging out. They've been walking for days, but before that, they've been worked for 400 years nonstop as slaves. So vacations, Labor Day weekends, time away just to sit and be still, were not really something they were used to. So Moses is gone, and by the next morning, no one sees him. And time passes, and the passage says that something cracked. It was as if everyone got this restless leg syndrome, but it just permeated their entire bodies and their minds and their spirits. <coughs> And they lash out. Because everybody has a point where enough is just simply enough already. And this isn't something new. I mean, we've seen this happen all over the place. It's happened to a community in particular. After 400 years of slavery and then being emancipated and then being given the right to vote and then being freed with laws that have told them that it's illegal to persecute based on their color, they still feel like they're being picked apart. As if none of that had ever happened. Or, there are communities that are writhing in deep pain because they've been firebombed, because people are angry, and so other people have come with guns and ammo who are not in law enforcement and said, enough is enough. We're going to put a stop to this. And people are losing their jobs still because of how we feel like we have to deal with COVID and the economy is still not great. And we keep saying to people in conversations at lunch, at dinner, enough is enough. Let's get on with life. And yeah, this happens on the big screen, but it's also a part of every single one of us. We go through this all the time. If ever you've been in a hospital and they tell you the day before you're going to get discharged, you're going to get discharged at noon tomorrow. And then the doctor doesn't come until 6 p.m. that night. Enough is enough. You're in line at Starbucks waiting to get your cup of coffee, but it's taking too long. And you've got a meeting you have to get to, and so you leave. Because you got to go, and enough is enough. You get a text or you see something on social media and it scares you and so you send a message and it's just silence. And you're worried. And you're wondering how long it's going to take before something changes. 
whether it's injustice or Amazon packages or mail or ballots or letters from your doctor, when we are waiting, we all have a breaking point. And the question isn't if, but when something important is pushed back, is delayed, is taking too long, what will we do next? For the people of God, they decided to take matters into their own hands. They surrounded Moses' brother, Aaron, and they told him what he was going to do. They decided to pitch this whole one God thing and just throw that and the baby of Moses out with the bathwater and start fresh. They wanted a God in their image. A God who was going to answer when they called, who was going to do what they wanted him to do, who was going to be there exactly the way they thought they needed. And this Moses, this Moses, the guy who got us out of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. We don't know. And it is eating us up inside. Not knowing is the absolute worst for us when we need to. Now don't get me wrong, all of us know that ignorance sometimes is bliss. That's why I'm out on Facebook. I love you, but I don't want to see your posts. Sometimes it's good not to know, but other times we have to. We need to. But we don't. And it drives us insane. And this is the heart of the problem, not only for the Israelites of old, but for because when something isn't happening that should happen, that ought to happen, that needs to happen, and we're left in the dark, we not only feel helpless and clueless, we feel vulnerable, and not in a good way, but in a way that tells us we are not safe. And so delays make us do things to take steps to protect ourselves. And other people. So the people tell Aaron to make them a god because you know it's about as easy as making an omelet or a cake. And Aaron does so because he's got no other option. And everyone pitches him and they give him what they wanted, and their god is a sweet little baby cow. It's not actually their god, by the way, it's the god of their neighbors. The Canaanites, they just looked over the fence, liked what they saw, went to Menards, and bought one for themselves. Because it looks easy and better. And it's many times what happens when we act out of restlessness. But it doesn't have to happen that way. To these people, Moses was way past doom. But to God, he was right on time. Never, at any point in all of this story, in all of their wondering and concerns, did these people who staged a coup ask, what is God up to? Nobody asked, what is the Lord doing? And all of that is a mistake that we make from time to time. We let go of friends of family, of church, of things that are interesting, even of our better judgment in order to feel in control when enough is enough. And living this way is hard because for us, it's living as if there is no God out there at all who is actually in control. But we know that there is. Now, the story gives no indication that there is anything wrong with getting frustrated. There is nothing wrong with getting angry on occasion. The Bible is full of righteous anger, of holy indignation. That's fair game. But don't cut Jesus out of the process when your soul and spirit are restless like your leg. The classic mistake we make is strategizing and theorizing all kinds of ways that forget to include the fact that Jesus is actually enough. But 
But when we respond in faith and don't react out of restlessness, we actually will experience the truth that comes later in the story. That the wait is worth it. Amen. I invite you to take a moment. Forget about the rest of the worship service and just be present wherever the Holy Spirit has got you. There's a prayer prompt on the screen, and for those of you at home, the prayer prompt is, when was the last time you waited for what felt like too long for something important? Take a beat and spend some time.
This morning, as we have heard God speak to us, we have an opportunity in multiple ways to speak back. And one of the ways that we'd love to do so is to speak with our lives in the realm beyond words with actions. And this morning, as we give of our tithes and offerings to God, we don't pass around plates like we normally do because of COVID. There's an offering plate in the, the narthex that you can easily give online. And as we have and as we will and as we do so, the first offering that we bring to God is one of the soul. There is a quiet group of people that are working really hard in the background right now to make Sunday morning accessible for people wherever they are in perpetuity. Right now we're, we're, we're roughing it with whoever's on the phone that is. Um, but this is a camera system task force. And they're working right now to get us bids to install a high-grade professional camera system so that accessibility is never an issue. So that wherever you are, wherever you go, our church family stays connected through worship. So this morning, we thank God for Jim Crow, for Daryl Baldwin, for Taylor Hauser, and for Phyllis Hudson and their work. Can we thank God for them this morning? God, we lift to you these tithes and offerings because when we look around the landscape of our lives, we see your footprints everywhere and we feel your wind in our face. Sometimes, Lord, we lose sight and we lose track and we get restless and frustrated and we blow up and we contradict the faith that you've given us. And yet we take great comfort knowing that you have come in the ordinary things of like bread and juice and a cross and us broken people to work in miracles and to spread the good news that you love the entire globe. So God, take and use these gifts of tithes and offerings. Use them, multiply them for your glory alone. Bless these amazing people on the camera system task force that you have called to help this church find new avenues to reach people who may have no clue who you are. To reach people who may have gone a long way away from church because of some very good reasons. Empower us through these gifts to bless your name and to be your people for this town, for this community, for this world. We lift these prayers knowing that we cannot pray them without acknowledging that we stand on the shoulders of all those going back to Moses who have taught us what it is to be your people. So we affirm this prayer with the words that we say together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning we have an opportunity to taste the truth of those words. Because as you know very well, this whole thing called faith is not just a philosophy or a great idea to make dark days a little brighter. It is a lived experience with a breathing, dynamic God who is nearer to us than the breath on our lips. So this morning we have the opportunity to celebrate the sacrament of communion. And we do so with these things that look like coffee creamers, but I assure you they are not, because coffee creamers shouldn't be purple. These are communion packets. Does everybody have a communion packet? Does anybody not have a communion would gently raise your hand, our worship ministry team will bring those back for you. Little trick, because I've messed this up every time that we have done this, there is two little flags. 
There's a thin, clear plastic flap that won't break off the top to reveal the bread. And then there is another flap underneath that's a big tear to reveal the juice. So as our worship ministry team is going around, let us enter in now into a time of prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. We give you thanks, God, that through your servant, your Son, Jesus Christ, who you sent to be our Savior and Redeemer and a messenger of your will, he is your word, inseparable from you, through whom you made all things possible in whom you take delight. And so we say together, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So gracious God, pour out the Holy Spirit upon us, and upon these gifts of and juice. Let them be for us the body and the blood of Jesus, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood and sent out in the power of your spirit to live for others as Christ lives for us, announcing his death for the sins of the world and telling his resurrection to all and so we say to you, God, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ, all people here below. Praise Holy Spirit everywhere. Praise Triune God whom we adore. Amen. On the night that Jesus was actually betrayed by his best friends. He was having dinner with them, and it was a really special evening, and he took a piece of bread, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat this. This bread is actually my body, broken for you. Eat of it all of you. In a similar way, after dinner, he was reclining and he took a glass of wine and some made of grape juice. And he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink of it, all of you, and remember me. Later on, the Apostle Paul reminds us that every time we eat this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim our Lord's saving death until he comes again. And spoiler alert, he's on his way. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Amen. I invite you to join us at home if you have a piece of bread, a wafer, a loaf. Those of you who are joining us, tear the top. The body of Christ broken.
a meal, conversation, playing for the kids, just the touching of our hand to heal and to bless and to transform us into new people. We thank you for meeting us here in this special place, not because of the roof or the bones of the building, but because of the body that is collectively joined together and present here.
Let us pray. God, we lift to you our sister Phyllis. And we thank you that you have brought her through a tough season with the fall and then with getting pneumonia and being in the hospital. It's too much. Enough is enough. And we thank you that that is actually the case, that she is recovering. Thank you for answering our prayers. Thank you for blessing her with cards. We ask that you would surround her and the entire community of numbers. We are so grateful that they have had no cases of COVID, that they are doing well, but we miss them and they miss us. We are a family in this community, and so we pray that you would come with them. Lord, we also ask that you would be with our brother, Rich Roth, who is going in for a procedure to install a feeding tube because his, his uh, digestive system just is not working properly and it is scary. And we need, Lord, this to work. He needs this to work. So we stand on your promises. We lean totally on your understanding because, God, it is so confusing how the medical teams do it, and yet it is awesome. Let this procedure work. Let his recovery go well. Let this feeding tube restore him to health and energy and vigor. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Other prayer requests. Tony. God, receive into your loving arms our sister from the grave. And in the wake of the crater left behind where she once was, we ask that you would fill that void in the lives of her family and her friends in this community with your comfort, with your presence, with your assurance that this is not goodbye, but see you later. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Our sister, Jane Sanders, shared with us a prayer request for and from her daughter, Angie, who is a pastor out in the Pacific Northwest, just for herself, who is really struggling with the frustrations and, and, and the restrictions that, that doing ministry during COVID has placed on her and her faith community. She also asked for prayers for myself and for all pastors. Um, who are struggling at this time to, to help their congregations keep their eyes up and stay focused and to stay healthy. Let us pray. God, we thank you for calling our sister Angie and all those who have heeded the Spirit's call to ordain ministry. Lord, it is a tough time and that is like the greatest understatement ever. Lord, as she is ministering to your people and helping them to grow in their health and being in your grace as disciples. It is super frustrating beyond understanding sometimes. And so we ask Lord, that you would give her places of calm, places of quiet, of rest and restoration, and truly resurrection. Because death and COVID and depressing days and defeatist mentalities is not the final word on our life. Be with this church, with its pastor, with its elders, be with all those in ministry. We ask that you would strengthen them for your glory, that they may serve you with sustainability, with energy, and with joy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Any other prayers of joy or concern? Steve. Steve is here. One hand. Steve Miller is with us in person today. No, it's because he had an amazing doctor who 
was actually a son of this church, Troy Roberson. And we are grateful that Steve is here, that he's recovering well, that the pain and swelling has really diminished, and ask that that will continue, and that full healing would be in his sights. God, we live for your brother Steve. We thank you. We thank you for sending him to Troy down at Orthomini and all those who worked to restore his shoulder, his rotator cuff, to new health, to revitalization, to pain freeness. God, we are so grateful to have him back with us in person in worship. And we're grateful that you sent him an amazing spouse, an amazing wife, Stacy, who's cared for him and loved him and been very patient with him. God, as he continues to recover and move towards another shoulder surgery, we ask that this one would heal quick and pain free and you would set him up for an even better procedure as he moves to full mobility in his own body. Lord, give him mercy. Linda, yes, ma'am. You don't want to stand up for yourself, right? <laughs> yes. What I've heard of here today is everybody, we've got our stresses, we've got our feelings that are hard to deal with because of this COVID. Yeah. What I would like to encourage everyone to do is to look for Jesus in the simple things. Mm -hmm. The sunrise, the sunset, the birds singing, the wind blowing. And also, um, gosh, I lost my train of thought. It's okay, guys. That's why I write it down. Yeah. That's why I write it down. Yeah. You never know when God is sending you a message through a stranger. Absolutely. And I know um, not everybody gets up and says what's going on in their head, but this just came to me that I've got to do this. It's, you need to look for Jesus because he's there. He hasn't forgotten. Amen. And um, I've had many people come to me Absolutely. Thank you, Linda. So for those of you at home and those of you that stay group, so you may not have been able to hear because these masks are a little muffly to say the least. Um, but Linda just shared a, a prayer of encouragement that as we go throughout our lives, we, we look for the simple beauties of God showing up, Jesus in the tiniest ways in a conversation at the grocery store because he's there. Lord, we lift to you this encouragement, this word of joy and strength from our sister Linda. Guide us to be attentive not to just the tragedies and the things that catch our attention on the news, but to the resurrection. That is just covering the landscape of life, and we have a hard time seeing it sometimes. Help us to focus and be attentive to you in the little things. And show up, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Any other prayer requests? God, we lift you all of these prayers in the multitude unspoken with the words that you taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now go. May the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit that ain't going anywhere, rest and abide within each other. Thank you.